Hello, folks, and welcome to my current room. Although, I actually will have some news about some location changes soon. Oh, it took a second to start. Welcome, folks. It took me a long time to get this stream going because it has some technological aspects and... As you know, I prefer old-fashioned things, including some rare old-fashioned things from my past that I discovered recently that I will share throughout this stream as well. But this stream is more so of a technological basis, because although I'm not a big technology guy in terms of, like, I don't play many video games, I don't really use many applications that aren't related to YouTube or math or music or a few other things I'm really uh, interested in. However, some of those things that we mentioned included math at least, and sometimes there are beautiful demonstrations that mathematically have emerged in recent times that back in the day it would have taken somebody forever to try and plot out these diagrams we can see some of them it would even be almost impractical or impossible back in the day to make a 3d mold that you could spin around and look into in the same way that we could do on a computer so sometimes we want to like computers as our friends for mathematics someday we'll return to the fighting the computers when i uh uh, make someday some sequel to my episode about how AI mathematics can be helpful in some ways and very unhelpful in other ways. Uh, if we ever return to that, we'll have to download GPT-4 of ChatGPT so nobody can say it's just the fact that I was using ChatGPT 3.5 as to why it was so bad. Uh, from what I've heard, it, we will still find bad results. And in general, there's some technology that we want to enjoy. Now, I'm still experimenting right now with having my beats play in the background when I do my room streams instead of a fan in the background. But let me know if the beats are ever either too quiet to hear compared to my voice or drowning out my voice if I should turn them up or down. I don't know. It's a one-man show today. And I do have a lot of really fun plans for Grade Negative 3 that will include additional help from other people who I will be able to get help from. And I have some fun plans for our Grade Negative 2 wrap-up as well. We are at about Grade Negative, um, maybe about two-point repeating sevens probably somewhere around that number. Now, moving into what we'll be looking at, that number we would call a rational number because if a decimal in any of our typical bases has a periodic pattern, like one, two, five, one, two, five forever, that that number must be rational. Whereas an irrational number, such as pi, which does go a level beyond irrationality into the type of number known as a transcendental number, which means that it's not the solution to any typical type of algebraic equation using a finite amount of polynomials. But we don't really need to worry about transcendentality today because irrational numbers already do crazy things and you know, they're a bigger group that transcendentals are included in, and irrationals will do enough of a job at displaying most of the cool stuff we want to see today. What some of these things are related to is pi, and I suppose that's mildly because I didn't put out anything for pi day, and I figured we gotta get some circular stuff in during the month, but also because I put out a short recently, and the most popular of the recent shorts I've put out is about how pi is irrational, which many of the viewers already knew. I didn't mention the transcendentality, but how pi is not necessarily what's considered a normal number. And someone said beats should go down a bit, and I did turn them down a bit, thank you. Um, it's hard to tell on my end because it's coming through 
you hearing the computer sound and then some of it is coming through you hearing my speakers sound so it's hard to tell what those add up to um beats down a little bit although they may vary in volume these are songs i've made but they need some refinement before they're finished and they're not all leveled volumes now when we look at this short I made recently about how Pi is not... We don't need to look at it, actually. Most of you have probably seen it. It was one of the more popular ones recently. Unless you're not a shorts viewer, which, honestly, I'm not either. I genuinely think I make more shorts than I watch, even in this grade. Even in this grade, when I've only made a small batch of shorts... Uh, compared to last grade, because I was more focused on long episodes and live streams this grade, was I still think I made more shorts than I watched. In any case, if you're not that type of viewer or that epi little short thing was about how Pi, we don't actually know that it contains every single string of digits. We can look kind of far and find a lot, and if I look on one of these Wolfram demonstrations I have downloaded here, these are some of the many options we may look at today. We could do something like what's called Find Your Name in Pi right here. And let's try and remember to give a shout out to each person who designed these. We are looking at programs that are made by what's called the Wolfram Demonstrations Project. So the original shout out is Stephen Wolfram himself, who created this website that is an excellent calculator. Um, it has a good resource page that's kind of Wikipedia-like. And it also has things like the Demonstrations Project. This is free. This is not sponsored by them or whatever. I just think it's cool to have good free resources like this. So Stephen Wolfram is doing good things for the world. In fact, when I scroll down on the details, I don't even know if I'm going to see whether this was contributed by him or someone else, because a lot of them were straight up contributed by him. This one was contributed by Eric Maho. We're going to be mispronouncing some names today. Now, if we want to find our name in Pi, we need a translation method and they are using a very arbitrary one here so this is maybe the least interesting of all the examples we'll see today because of how arbitrary it is that they're considering certain things like these strings of digits it's even weird that they're saying lee is this because you'd think you'd need zero three zero two why is three two nine lee so let's see uh, here's how they do it. Well, good thing they give explanations. Uh, and what I'm here for is fiddling around with these things while I explain the explanations. Because sometimes an explanation is a little dense. So the explanation of the explanation here is that we're used to base 10. We can try different bases. If we did base 26, that would give us the amount of letters in the English language. And so we can look at which strings that are three, four, or five digits occur within the first beginning stretch of pi based on pi. I was expecting they might do pi in base 10 and be like, zero, one is A, and we just don't do things. We don't know what to do what, with things over two, six. There would be a way to figure it out modularly or otherwise, but... This makes much more sense that we are converting to the amount of the base being how many letters are in the language we're looking at. And so let's look for where combo and class show up, for example. Where, how do I do this? Um, start at position name. Oh, I don't find, it says find your name in Pi. Where do I type, how can I not change name to combo? Um, Huh, what's going on here? It says I should be able to find my name and Pi on this one. Like I said, this is the one I'm like least interested in anyway. Basically, the point of this would be to demonstrate, although I cannot figure out where I'm supposed to type in my name to get it. Uh, oh, right here, after name. I'm getting a little 
flasher thing for the first time. Never mind, it's not working. So, the point of this is that we know enough digits in Pi that based on many methods of encoding them, we could find a term like Demotro or Combo or Class within Pi. But, is there a string that is precisely some random book on my shelf? Is there a string that is like, there's a good one off here. Um, it's a pretty random book, but one of my favorite authors, Kurt Vonnegut. Is there a book or, or a string of pi that is identical to these random letters he wrote in the order this book published them in pi? Well, mathematicians think so, but they're not sure. Because there's these things called normal numbers, I'll make an episode about someday, and there's various sorts of them. You can have levels of being simply normal, or being normal in a base, or being what's called absolutely normal. So there's a few levels. But basically, these relate to, do digits occur evenly frequently? And does any finite size digit string occur eventually? And things like that. Somebody here mentions the Library of Babel, which is similar to this. It's a concept as well as I believe there is an online resource that does a version of this where you imagine a library with every book that's ever existed. This is a concept that has shown up in dreams of mine within fiction of mine that I've written and such. And uh, yes, uh, I, I love uh, the Library of Babel. Somebody is saying that Kurt Vonnegut's book, God Bless Your Mr. Rosewater Slaps, uh, agreed that one's great but I gotta say if you're gonna start with any Kurt Vonnegut uh, some excellent novels include Cat's Cradle, Slaughterhouse Five, Breakfast of Champions, and maybe my personal favorite Sirens of Titan. Now this was just one demonstration of how Okay, we can find our strings that we want. I can find 4474849484 four, 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 somewhere in pi already, I'm almost guaranteed, because we know so many digits of it. I can probably even find like the string 00101001 in many, many, many bases. You can probably find that somewhere in pi. And it's likely that we can find every string in pi. It's likely that it is so normal in terms of, it's kind of silly nickname for the numbers, but they're called normal numbers. It's likely that it does contain all those, but people assume that it's a rationality guarantees that. And it doesn't, and it hasn't been proven whether pi is that sort of number. Um, the only numbers that we really know, as far as, the only numbers I've learned of that we know that can do this are ones that were made for this reason that were like designed to try and have this property as opposed to being a number that emerges as i say in the wilds of mathematics meaning how like you look at enough circles you'll find pi you look at enough types of growth you'll find e you look at enough squares you'll find square root of two and so on Somebody asked how many digits of pi we know. That's a good question. Why don't we look that up? But like I said, sometimes they try and guess what zip code I'm at when I try and look things up here. I can't get my browsers to not do that for some reason. I'm not the tech quiz. So I make my face big when I Google stuff so that we're not seeing their guess of what zip code I'm at or whatever. And to all the stalkers, like I've said, they guess wrong sometimes. So don't assume it's correct. Uh, not all the stalkers. Don't worry, folks. We haven't gotten any stalkers yet because I've already scared them away with all my threats of poison and broken glass. Oh, don't worry. I'm half joking. Now, looking up how many digits of pi we know, um, first we're going to see how many in base 10 would be the answer. We know more than 105 trillion digits of pi. 105 trillion is a very big number. That is one zero five zero 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 zero. I know trillion might sound like it would have three sets of threes, but it doesn't. A mil billion has three, trillion has four. It's weird, but that's you know the short versus long scale. So 
what about other bases? Why don't we look that up? Uh, how many digits of pi do we know in various bases? Why don't we look up? So, chronology of computation of pi. All right, let's pull open my streaming browser for this and see. I'm going to pull open this article because it's a good question. How many digits of pi do we know made me wonder how many digits of pi have we researched in different bases because in my opinion we got some catching up to do. I doubt any other bases we know anywhere close to 105 trillion digits of pi. So why are we only looking for the patterns in base 10? So here's chronology of computation of pi on Wikipedia. Um, where we can see a brief timeline and such. Here they show, this is in base 10, obviously, but this is a graph of how much pi they knew at different points. That's pretty cool. So, basically we knew one digit of pi for a little while because we you knew it, it was about three. And then we're inching up. Okay, we know it's around 22 sevenths or around 3.14 if we'd been using the decimal system. And then you start to sandwich in your upper and lower limits. And you're like, at some point here, they were probably like, we know pi is smaller than this fraction, but bigger than this fraction. And that gives an amount of decimal digits of accuracy. And you know why it skyrocketed? Because like I said, despite me being somebody who likes older fashion things like paper books and, you know, all the stuff on my bed that I found for my past, I'll show you in a bit. I mean, I didn't find it on my bed. I found it and then put it on my bed for the stream. But despite me liking that old fashioned stuff, computers help with some stuff. Computers are why this went like that. If you count, you know, calculating devices in general as computers. I don't know if this is going to tell us about all the bases. I wanted to find all the bases, but every single time you're going to see this guy's name on the list. Leonard Euler. He gets a mention in our next episode. I, could, I had to mention him. Oh no, that was the last episode. Um, he got a mention in the one we just did about modular exponentiation. His name just showed up naturally because he proved something about it. Now, of course, his name shows up many more times on this list. Let's also shout out Romanogen. Great. Very interesting guy. Now, as we go forward, these are how many digits. That's not honestly as interesting. You know, it's interesting. Um... I mean, okay, it is an interesting question how many digits we know. It's worth looking up. But what's really interesting is the work toward prime gaps and stuff like that. How in the last 20 years, there's been a lot of progress on how far apart primes can be, which approaches what's known as the twin prime conjecture. And this guy, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing the name wrong, but Yitang Zhang or something like that was the first guy who calculated that, um, that he proved that there was a finite... The, the, what he proved is that there was a finite gap between primes that was a really big one, like in the millions, that it will occur infinitely a gap of that size or less, which means that infinitely many times the primes will be within that number of each other in the many millions. And then the proof was refined by other mathematicians like James Maynard, Terence Tao, and others. And to me, that's the next cool thing that will be cracked about it. But wait, wait, I got distracted because there's a link between the pi and the primes and I didn't really explain the link. Um, anyway, I can't go too deep into... Um, explaining random math i will come back to the comments so first what we're going to do is take a peek at what some of these other demonstrations that represent pi's digits tell us well remember i said that we haven't 
proven that pi even has an even distribution of digits that maybe you zoom out far enough and in base 10 or some base or all bases or whatever that the digits become ununiform that it starts having fewer of a digit and it could even stop having a digit pi could stop having threes in it and i want to say whenever it wanted but you know pi is doing what it's told by nature good old pi and so pi is not necessarily the one holding the weight just all of the circular math made makes pi have a lot of weight to carry but if we do look at what we know so far we can see some simple just demonstrations not that are proofs there are also attempts at proofs that pi is normal but that hasn't been achieved yet but we can see reasons why a mathematician would expect this to be the case uh, on a very simplistic level. They have done far more research than these Wolfram demonstrations can show us. But, for example, here I'm only looking at 10 digits in base 10. And pi has more 1s and 5s in the mix, and it doesn't have a single 0 yet. Now let's go to uh, 100 digits. At a hundred, okay, I can go exactly. We're at a hundred. We're at ninety-two digits. Nine and eight look like they're putting a lot of digits in the mix. We get some zeros now, but one and five shrunk a lot since last time. But as we really go up, and now we are past a thousand digits, and now we are past five thousand digits. And now we are at 10,000 digits. We can see that from this scale, they look almost identical. The amount that we have in each of these. That there's, I mean, it's not going to be that there's like within 100 amount of nines as as many zeros necessarily. But we're looking at 10,000 digits. Proportionally, they approach seemingly the same scale we could do this in other bases as well i could look at this just in binary this is how many zeros versus ones we get to and look how it approaches that halfway point how about base three we can see how base three starts out with a lot more zeros and ones than twos and then we start approaching that and we could even go to a higher base we could go to base 12 we can go to base six. Or, you know, whatever base this particular program lets us go up to, which is 16. Looks like base 16 starts out with a whole lot of eights in it, not a seven or nine in sight. Okay, wait a minute. Why does that say E? Um, that's weird. Why would... Oh, okay. That's because in base... Okay, this really tripped me up. Because we might talk about the number E today. That's another classic constant, kind of like pi, that's about 2.7. And I thought this meant the constant E. And I was like, what the heck? Why are they counting how many of the digits are E? That doesn't make any sense. Then I remembered that in base 16, we are far enough along, we've needed that many letters as new characters. So like base 12 would have A equal 10 or whatever symbol we chose, but we'll use A now because it's easier. Base, you know, would also have a B to mean 11. Here we go all the way up to E. E essentially would be how many, how many 14s we have. So, looks like some 14s are in the mix. But that really tripped me up with the E thing. So, that's a pi digit pi. But what if we look at a pi digit graph that spikes upward or downward depending on what it's seen or not seen? Well, 
I don't remember which of these are which because they don't have pictures. It's hard to tell by the names. Um, the, oh, here we go. This is the right one. Yup. So, we're going to be looking in base 10 to start. And what they're counting right here is that the slider walks. Oh, and we should try and remember to shout out everyone who contributed these. But like I said, some are contributed by the guy who invented this website, Stephen Wolfram. So, uh, this guy got our original shout out already. He contributes a ton of them. Uh, just to be fair, let's try and remember to shout out whoever made Pi Digits Pi. Uh, Pi Digits Pi was made by Hector Zanil. Now, you can try these yourself. I am such non a tech wizard, obviously, and I can figure it out. So, here we can see that we're in base 10, we're plotting how many digits have occurred, and what happens is the slider walks up or down based on, in this base, whether the digit it sees in pi is more or less than the halfway point. So like if I was in base seven, if it saw a five, it would walk up, and if it saw a two, it would walk down. So let's see, if we're plotting a bunch of digits, we zoom out and we see that it does get kind of high up or low, but it does both. The fact that it's getting high both up and low actually kind of tells us that it's close to having a chance of being balanced in the long run. Then here, we get pretty high. That's interesting that after 3,000 digits, we have a strange lead in base 10 in terms of how many of the digits were larger than the halfway point? What about other bases? In base 9, not quite the same case. Base 8. That base 8? Why is everything going downward in base 8? Base 8 has a lot of digits less than 4. All right. But what we can see is that although they trend in these really weird ways, a lot of them pass this, the zero multiple times. And the ones that don't, don't end up that far off from it, as if they could meet it again. This is another way we could try and visualize. And let's just now pick one more base, like base six, and then slide up. Like this is going digits at a time. This is another way to visualize different sorts of randomness within the digits of an irrational number like pi. There's something similar, and wait, wait, uh-oh, I want to remember to shout out whoever made these. This one was made by... Oh, there's another Wolfram original. So the next one probably will be two. That was pi again by accident, but here we got square roots. And square roots, we can do a similar thing because like I said, pi's transcendental quality that it's not a solution of an equation like x squared equals two is really cool, but it does not necessarily relate to whether it would be a normal number or not. I mean, everything relates, but it would not necessarily make or break whether pi was going to be normal. Because square root of 2 has also not been shown whether or not it repeats every possible digit string. Many, many numbers have not. In fact, let me pull up a list of a bunch of numbers that have not been shown to do this. Which numbers that are most of these, if not all, are suspected that at some point they repeat every single digit string, probably even in every typical base, but it hasn't been proven. And some of these include pi. Okay, I can't find the thing I was looking for, so I'll just say a few. 
pi e square roots. Um, there's this whole other cool constant known as the euler mascheroni constant, which we'll look into that one at some point. The, a lot of numbers basically have been demonstrated to, if they're irrational, that we don't know if they're normal or not. We don't really know their big scale digit behavior. Look at all these different ways we could view these graphs. So this one is in square roots, gives us a number, a base the number's in, and how many digits we plot. And we could say, what if I wanna know something about the number 31 in base six? Well, here is the randomness spike of more or less than halfway point on that. And it does keep crossing the middle point as if it wants to average out at the middle on the long run, even if it looks like it's skewing somewhere for a while. Remember, these spikes could get bigger, but they might come back. And mathematicians do suspect that pi is a normal number. Now, what are some other wild things about pi that we can see? Well, one random fun one that I just think's fun real quick is what if we wanted to approximate circular things using square things? Well, this is a way of approximating spheres with boxes designed by Jeremy Batterson. And the way we can do this is by changing the radius as well as the sampling rate. Now, the sampling rate, I'm not sure exactly how they're defining that, but let's just play around with this. This is the sampling rate changing at different radii, which is interesting. I mean, I'm changing for the same radii, the sample rate changing. What if our radius is five? Well, that's a low sampling rate. I suppose we want a larger sampling rate because it is creating a more uniform sphere. So what if we keep our sampling rate kicked up to the max? Make this a little bigger. That was weird. Why did it change it when I just tried to make it bigger? Okay, in any case, now what we're gonna do is I'm going to... Okay, it's a little too big. We are going to change the radii under this sampling rate. So here's when the radius is tiny. And I guess it's taking it a second to load this. I thought this should be radius 1. Yeah, there... Okay. It's taking a while to load this one. This one... Hopefully I don't crash our stream or something. Okay, I'm trying to crank up the radius up here, but... Okay, it's just gonna take a while to load. This one's going really slow. We're just going to see their best cubical approximation of the circle. And what they offer here, this is our best bet, you know. Oh, whoa, no it's not. It does take a while to load. This is our best bet. And you might wonder, you know, should I put another little bit on there or would that be more or less spherical? How can we calculate this? We could determine a way of justifying a radius and seeing what is the difference between my distribution of cubes and the given radius, what that would have made with a sphere. And then we can show the shapes that do it well. So, that one's fun, but pretty quick and separate from the others. Some of the other ones we'll look at is other ways of seeing digits in numbers like pi. And we're going to begin with, what about the distribution of leading digits of pi to a different power. Now we looked at ending digits a bit in the last episode on the main combo class channel. Make sure you're tuned in there. That's actually my main channel. 
it, linked in the description, you can see my modular exponentiation episode. This one was created by um, Wolfram himself again. And here we're seeing pi to the n with a different range and a different base and seeing the distribution of different leading digits. If my range only includes that amount, which looks like 10 numbers total, looks like pi to the n is going to begin with a lot of nines, a lot of threes, and a couple twos. But as we increase our range, we find here that, wait a minute, it's approaching something, but let me shrink this one so we can see this better. It's approaching something, but it's not approaching a flat line. It's approaching a different distribution. Now let's see in another base. In each of these bases, the leading digits of pi to a certain power follow this trend. Now, this reminds me of these distributions you'll see in numbers um, that maybe we'll make an episode about why things like this happen someday. And on this one, we can even see powers as well. 2 to the n. What happens to 2 to the n in our base? Well, after the first 10, this is how many leading digits we've got. Let's see if we can name them, because you, you got you know, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. And basically, if I did the first 10, this is what I'd get. Now, this one also is contributed by Wolfram, by the way, just since we're trying to shout out as many of the people as we remember. Now... Here we can see this occur not just in base 10, but in other bases we can choose. That they have these interesting leading digit patterns. Other patterns occur as well. And just for fun, let's see what happens when we do factorials, Fibonacci. Now, before I make an episode about it, leave a comment if you can figure out the reason why lower digits would occur more often in certain frequencies. And a way to think about that could be to begin by wondering, well, if I just count up to the number 1000, which digit would have occurred the most? Like counting up whole numbers. And you'll start to see patterns why this might be the case. But now I'm on login and we're getting the opposite. Whoa. Login does login is crazy. Look at login. You can't see exactly what numbers those are. They're these. Right here. They like climbing up one at a time. That looks cool. Now those are some of our pi related ones but not even all because there's other things about pi i'd like to see one of them is going to relate to a few random walks like if you walked a random direction based on your numbers we saw that with the spiky graphs but what if we did that in a 2d or 3d fashion another one which we'll do first because this is another singular sort of random one. There's a fun paradox you may have seen before. I haven't done any content, I don't think, about this paradox yet. At least not any non-live stream content. I may have mentioned it. Here we have pi. But we're saying pi equals 4? Why would that be the case? Well, right now... I'm going to go one step in, and by that step, what I mean is I was looking at the area of this square. If this is a circle of radius 1, it has diameter 2, which would make the square side length 2, 
which would make the square have area of four. So the square has area of four, assuming that the radius is one. We can also say that in general, it would, we could multiply by other quantities as well to generalize that. One step in, I'm cutting off some corners. I'm saying my new area I'm looking at, oh no, uh, air, sorry. I was using the wrong term because I was thinking of a different... Uh, I, I'm making an episode in the future someday in a while that will relate to another thing that this reminded me of, which is area-based. But this one is surface area or circumference-based. So it is four still, but it's because in this case, we're actually going to assume the diameter is one. So the radius is a half. In this case, the diameter is one here. This is how we explain this paradox. Now, this gives us the outside of the square being four. We know the outside of the circle should be pi times the diameter. So it should be pi d, and this should be 4d. It's 4d? It looks 2d. No, not four dimensional but it should be four times the diameter. Now, if we cut off a step or two, what we're doing there is slicing off corners in a way that shouldn't change the surface area of the square. Or the I'm using surface area because I keep thinking about area. I should be calling this perimeter. It does not change the perimeter of the square, which is now no longer a square, but a square-like shape. Because... The amount that it took to go from there to there is the same, the same as the amount it's going to take to go from there to there. So this new white shape, the square-like one, should have the same perimeter as the square did. After two steps, the same logic can occur. And we can continue doing this. I can magnify it to look at one corner and see after many steps, it looks really close to a circle. But I know steps in this process. Did I change what the squares um, perimeter is? And when comparing it to our circumference, that seems like the squares... Uh-oh. Uh um, sometimes it loops back around to some other ones that... Um, are not my songs, but are my audio mixes of my episodes. So, we'll skip ahead for a second. Because I don't think we want to hear me talk over an audio mix of one of my episodes. So, why does this make sense? Well, that could be its own episode topic as well. Because what it actually reminds me of, personally, is the way that some numbers ha like e can be written as one plus one over n all to the power of n as you crank up n it approaches e and if you looked at that way of defining e and you imagine the infinities on their own just being like well this one one over n will vanish towards zero as i crank up n so I have one plus zero that's all going to the power of something really large. So I should just have one. I shouldn't have E. And in a way that could be called an E is one or E equals one paradox. In a way that reminds me of this circle pi equals four paradox. Because they're assuming that when you're approaching limits, you can follow certain rules you can't. They're assuming that Everything can be, when you want, treated as separate zips toward infinity. And when it makes more sense, treated as, no, they're both doing the same thing toward infinity. You got to be careful there. Our next episode relates to infinities. And in fact, the reason we're not in the classroom partially relates to the fact that the classroom had something wild occur in it that made sense to do in this episode because it's a running gag that occurred in grade negative one 
and because it semi-accidentally happened, and because it also made sense for it to be the time for me to push something a little harder than usual and cause a semi-accident to happen. It relates to the math of the episode, believe it or not, in a combo classy way. Now, oh, that could be a new term. You know, I could be classy. A lot of people might not consider me the classiest gentleman, but I'm combo classy. So, anyway, maybe we'll do an episode someday about how certain things, when you see how they zip toward infinity, don't quite do that. The next one that we're doing actually relates to the different sizes of infinity. It's my presentation that has made sense to do at some point as a mathish channel, which is about Cantor's diagonalization argument, the continuum hypothesis, the series of Aleph numbers, and the ways we classify different infinities. And this is different than something I'd recommend watching before, which is on the Combo Class channel, my episode called The Fake Infinities in Maths and Magic Cards. And the fake infinities I was referring to were arbitrarily large things. And this episode is not that. So don't be confused. Don't see it and think, hey, didn't I already see one about these almost infinite numbers compared to infinities? Well, in this one, we're looking at the actual infinities and other stacks of infinities that are built on this. So that'll be another pretty dense somewhere between 20 to 30 maybe 20 to 40 minutes long and should come out on about Thursday or Friday of this week now let's see what other fun charts we have now let me pull up in one real quick for you to analyze and I need to run to the bathroom real quick, but I'll just be a moment. So I'll just leave this playing and show you a modular arithmetic table. No, we'll do that one later. That one is not related to today's main topics. That one's related to the number rations games that I ranted about for many streams in a row. So yes, maybe I'll tell you about a new modular version of my number rations game later, a version where you are going modularly so numbers are much smaller. However, you are using three or four piles of numbers instead of two. For anyone who happened to follow a series of streams I made about some weird game design I was fiddling with, that one will save for later. Now, let's look at what happens if I were to take a random walk related to pi. Well, if I... Well, actually, maybe we only have square roots for that right now. I'm not sure if I have pi random walks. Uh, but I do have square root random walks. And like I said, square roots do a lot that pi stuff does because they're with the rational numbers is the important part in terms of how they're having this sort of weird behavior. There are ways in which square roots are simpler and fit into more things than pi because pi is not the solution to a simple algebraic equation. But in this circumstance, they're going to act similar. Now, what do I mean by random walk? Well, in this one, which was... I'm sorry if I didn't credit any of the contributors. We're going through a lot of these real quick. The point of the Wolfram's demonstration is that people give them out for free because they designed them and they want people to try them. So everybody who wonders who designed one, if I forgot to credit anyone, look it up and their name won't be at the bottom. Because shout out to everyone who made all these. And this one was uh, Vide Sexaria. And basically in this one, we're going to be taking a walk 
and it is going to not terminate. It's not going to have a little ending little loop it makes. And using the base we're in could tell us how many directions we allow our walk. Cubic grids are the easiest. So this one's in base four. So that they could say that, you know, like maybe it's if it's zero, I go up. If it's if the digit's one, I go that way. Two, three, zero, one, two, three. I don't know which direction they're putting which digit. But the point is that if I look at the starting random walk where we're looking at 500 base four digits of the square root of two, it looks like a little city got formed and as I go higher it looks like our city is growing and now it almost looks like the shapes of continents or islands or interconnected masses like that look at what the random walk does what beauty and that's just the square root of two what about the square root of three I mean well Better go, better try its neighbor first. Font was three, three. Some of these are really hard to point, right? It's hard, to, uh, did I aim this by a hair? Okay, three. So, as we're going up, three creates its own city first, and then little continent-like shapes. These are reminiscent to certain sorts of what are known as cellular automata, where things can have a pattern they follow, and you see what shapes they make on a certain graph-like structure. Stephen Wolfram was very into cellular automata and was one of the main innovators in that field. The guy who set up this whole demonstration project that people like Vita Saxaria have contributed to. Now... That's pretty cool. So let's just go pretty high up. What's a pretty large K? Here's the square root of what's the largest prime I know? What's the largest number I know is prime? Uh, probably. What's the largest number I know is prime? Pretty sure 313 is prime. So, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure 313 is prime. So, uh, let's see that city grow. And let's also see if anything different happens if I put in a more composite number. Or, like a number that square roots easier. So, maybe a square number. Let's see if I was at a square number, for example, 1,000. We still exhibit weird behavior, perhaps. Maybe a different sort of weird when we're at a square number. Lots to investigate with these random walks. Cellular automata can be very cool. One of the other people who uh, is an innovator in sorts of seeking that out and popularizing it is the author Clifford Pickover, who is a really cool author who I have some books around somewhere or another here of, and has some really cool cellular automata projects in his things that I've read about and taken notes about that I would love to try someday once I have somebody who wants to do all the tech part of it. Because I don't want to do the tech part of it. I want to do the thinking part of it and the uh, research and writing portions and the acting portions. Now, those are a few interesting demonstrations, and we do have some more demonstrations we can show. We also could take a little look at the classroom, but it would contain a spoiler. The last time we had the spoiler was at night, and I don't know if you could actually see it extremely well. So if we do that, it'll be on the latter portion of the stream, where I know for a fact that uh, if people want, they'll get a few warnings from me of, if you want to wait to see why I'm saving something crazy that has occurred in the convo classroom, although a similar thing did occur in grade negative one, if anyone has any guesses, 
has occurred again and made sense to occur now mixed with a semi-accident and it might be funnier for some of you to just see it happen next episode so i will give people the opt-out opportunity when we get to that portion of the stream if we visit the classroom now i do have some more of these demonstrations you saw i have a bajillion of these things i've checked out you can often do them online but if you download them they run a lot better and some of them you can't do online without downloading this but this was free and easy to download so why not again this is not sponsored by them or anything i still have not accepted any sponsors which i'm starting to feel pretty good about now that you're starting to hear all this news about how like half of all the sponsor companies turned out to be evil or something so starting to feel pretty good about having a poor lifestyle and just relying on patreon uh but you know maybe we'll take sponsorships from some legit companies someday i'm not putting it out of the picture but not in a rush now there are other things i'd like to show apart from these including some things in my room here and let me tell a little story let me grab a sip of water and tell you something important that's coming now i will be to a degree moving in just about a week but don't worry folks i'm moving for one somewhere very close where combo classroom will still be accessible to me because the combo classroom is in this corner of my parents backyard this room has never helped us that much this is my tiny bedroom and so the combo classroom will remain set up I'm going to be a bus ride away. It's going to take me under an hour to get from one place to the other, even though I don't have a car. And so I will be visiting the combo classroom several days a week. However, for reasons in my life, it has made sense for me. Well, I'll explain more about these reasons someday to move in terms of moving my bedroom out of a parent's house to staying at um sort of apartment -y house like place having a room in a place where one of my old friends max who we also know as raw burger long story where my friend raw burger lives and um I i'll have to ask him if he's gonna want me to refer to him as max or raw burger on the streams now uh, oh. Uh, in case he hops on any of them. It's an old school friend of mine. He used to film an old pre-combo class project with me and has filmed many chaotic moments. If you watched the Grade Negative 1 finale and you saw clips where I was like, these are some crazy things I used to film before I got my combo class act together. Um, a lot of those were filmed by my friend Max, who I'll be living with. So maybe I'll have them on some streams, but more importantly, perhaps I'm going to set up an indoor space that I can use like an indoor studio. So I have a indoor studio of my own as well as my combo class to come and be at a lot of the week. So in my indoor studio, my live streams may be able to have more of a precise schedule. I may be able to experiment with more bonus videos that I drop that are live stream like ideas, but more condensed and edited down. Most of the main episodes will probably be filmed when I'm visiting back here, because it won't be far. But that'll be a heads up. There'll actually be a big upgrade in my life, and I'll explain more about that in the future. But just letting my combo lords know. Now, I better check our chat. I haven't checked that in a while. So, a lot of good comments in our chats. Thank you to everybody. And somebody asked how many digits of pi do we know? How many do I know? I happen to know 3.14159265358975897. I think after that 2653 I don't know. I got lost near the end there. That's about how many digits of pi I currently know. 
People asked, are, is pi plus e irrational? Some of these questions are still unknown. I'm not sure about pi plus e, but I know a lot of things related to mixes of pi and e are unknown as to their transcendentality. They, um, their irrationality may be proven. So I'd have to look into the irrationality being proven of that. I'm not positive, but I would guess that pi plus e has at least not been proven to be transcendental, even been proven to be irrational, even though I'm sure it would shock the math world if it wasn't. So he's asking about Terrence Howard. We did a stream about that fellow once. We analyzed one times one equals two. That's an example of like a live stream topic that I still want to make a video about because it was just in a random live stream. I talked about it back in the day. So I have a lot of bonus videos that I want to make that are like, Things that I've kind of done in live streams, but I want to just turn to a little 10 minute video for this channel. It's not a main episode. And one of the bonus videos will probably be my conclusive opinions on Terrence Howard's one times one equals two proofs. And lots of other questions. I'm sorry I can't already answer everything right now. Somebody said burn some stuff. We're not going to go crazy burning stuff right now. You'll have to wait until you see the next episode coming out on my combo class channel by the end of the week because trust me, at least one thing is going to burn in that. Now, speaking of burning things, I do have a bag of candles that I found and that's the reason why I had so many things on my bed because I'm packing up to move bedrooms and so I have been finding all sorts of weird old things such as, oh, I forgot I had gotten these discount bulk candles that will help us light up the classroom we need to take field trips there at night and i found a variety of other mathematical things these look like some helpful cubic shapes we can arrange in different patterns as well as things from my childhood like i had a yo-yo phase as well as a lot of other fire related things yeah Good question about whoever asked about the fire because it wasn't just candles. I got these poppets too, you know, these things. Uh, they had these at the dollar store. And a while ago, I would always spend a portion of my paycheck on the dollar store because you could get the craziest bulk deals. And these poppets are fun. I have still experimented with trying to find a way to throw one at a thing soaked in lighter fluid and make the lighter fluid ignite. I've been unable to do that. This is one of the first pre-combo class videos filmed by that friend Max I mentioned in this stream. But you want to see what you can't need to clean anyway. Better to do outside. Sometimes I do this when I walk into a party, but I have to know that the person's going to be cool with it because it's going to send a lot of little rocks everywhere. But sometimes I'll do a little flash, like how the poppets blow off. It stings the fingers a little bit, but not very bad. If anything, I think it's the rocks flying that stings the fingers and not the fire. Um. Anyway, lots of other good comments. Thank you. Somebody commented about the room as a green screen. Yes, I really just made it green because when I had to pick back in the day, I picked a color called lizard green half because green reminds me of nature so i like the color green and half because when i saw the color called lizard green i was like that sounds extra cool now i do want to use this as a green screen possibly and don't worry because there's still a room in my parents house so i it's probably going to be used as a guest room or for a relative to live in or something or another where this space will still exist and I don't think they're going to repaint the green anytime soon. So now somebody asked how they avoid distractions. Um, I'm not always the best. I can fall into distractions as well. There are many motivational methods and I don't know if I can jump into that fully, but we'll do more motivational slash philosophical topics in the future. Some people are saying some things it reminds them of. Some people are saying I'm a good old guy, which is, thank you, I appreciate it. Somebody is asking if I believe in God. 
I probably shouldn't get that deep into that without offending many people, but I consider myself to be the first comboist, which I have a lot more explaining to do about over the grades. And if I had to use a term that people are familiar with, I would consider myself an agnostic, meaning that I don't believe we have conclusive proof as to whether God does nor doesn't exist. I am a science channel. You gotta guess, I'm a little more on the atheistic end. But I'm also a pretty spiritual guy. And I do believe that there are powerful forces in the world related to time, related to nature, related to meaningful coincidences and synchronicities and patterns and connections. And I'm a lot more spiritual than the average half atheist agnostic. So, I believe my own mix of strange things that I'll explain more about. It's okay if you have any religion you want in combo class, as long as you're not being mean to others or whatever. We'll accept all of them. But I do not follow any specific religion that would not be classified as comboism. Now, people are saying the streams are really uh, choppy. Um, it's like one FPS, they're saying. Okay, I'm quitting Wolfram Alpha and the music for a minute, and I want you to tell me if this helps much. I'm going to quit whatever I have in the background and tell me if the stream just improved, because I want to know if it's because the Wolfram demonstrations like they already looked laggy on my end let alone on your end i don't even know how bad it would have been over there so we'll have to um hope it wasn't too bad and for now pause the wolf from demonstrations quit the music and see it let me know if that changed anything about the quality or maybe we're just having a bad internet moment on this end or whatever um, people are mentioning, uh, if I have thoughts on old philosophers I'm interested in. I do, but I'm not sure if I'm ready to get into that quite today. What I wanted to finish real quick here is showing it's not just the poppets. Okay, just in case you couldn't see it, I'll do one more just in case we are one FPS. Okay, I guess I have to... It's not going to be that long before I can upgrade to be streaming on a different computer that I'm filming it on. Like, you know how a lot of streamers will have the one they're working on and the one that's filming it. Right now it's doing both of those. And so maybe it does not like filming, trying to post it as a live stream online and doing Wolfram demonstrations and my beats at the same time. Somebody said it got better before I closed. Uh, that's good to know in case we need to go back to it. But just so people can see in case it wasn't smoother before. Okay, that one didn't work. Good party trick. I should probably blink before I do that. Don't want one of those rocks in my eye. Now, um, there are other fire-related things I found, yes. And I found sparklers. So as it's getting dark, perhaps we will end our stream with going out to the convo classroom ever so briefly. And when we do that, what we might do is only get a half a spoiler from secret things occur in our next episode and how the classroom looks different now. By just using one extra long match and one or two sparklers to see our way. That will require waiting a moment because, as you know, it's not fully dark right now, but the sunset's coming before long. Okay, they weren't joking about these being really long matches. Okay, yeah, they were not joking. <laughs> this is definitely the longest match I've owned. Well, I mean, it's in, it's tied with the rest of the current new longest matches I own. Um, so we're going to light the way with one of those. 
right when it starts getting a little darker to see the combo classroom. As far as some of the other physical things here I have, we might come back to the digital ones in a minute, but I might as well show some of the physical stuff I've been finding while I was cleaning my room. Uh, this is one key to each house of each person currently watching the stream. Don't ask me how I got these. No, I'm kidding. I just found this crazy mass of keys on the street one day. And ever since then, if I find a key that I know won't find its way back to its owner, I collect it. Because I had a character in a book I was writing who collected keys. And then it happened to me. I found this big amount of keys on the street. And trust me, I did not have a way to get them back to whoever they belonged to. No identifying information. Um, left them there for a day. Took them after they had been there more than a day. And they are broken, basically. I don't think they actually went to anything. But if you do find a key, try and return it to its rightful owner. We got things I've been finding like crazy old notebooks we'll go through in another stream. Somebody said it's cursed. Okay, they said it feels like a bandwidth issue. They say it's lower than the recommended bandwidth. I'm going to try and fix this. So, let's do this. It's lower than the recommended bandwidth. I It says it's set to normal latency. And... See, I need to figure this out. I don't know how to fix it. It could just be an internet issue. But all I can see is that they don't like my bitrate. I can't tell why they don't like it. So maybe it's an internet issue. I don't know. Um, I do have... I'm going to try and plug in something like Ethernet maybe if possible at my new place or their Wi-Fi will probably be sturdier than here. And in any case we will continue to upgrade our streams. I have found a lot of my old filming gear as well and been figuring out which of my old school filming gear still works. And found things like dry erase whiteboard that's a calendar for if we do another calendar based episode need our dry erase that we love. Um, some blank cards I'll design a new batch of my numberations based card games on. Uh, somebody said Notebooks Patreon content. That was our magic fellow, one of our mods. And that is a good idea. Maybe I will uh, post pictures of my notebook pages that I wrote as a child for Patreon. Now, this, oh, this is a cool tool. This could be useful. Look, this tool I can use as pliers. So you see? I could use it as pliers. I can use it as a... Swiss Army knife. I could take a blade out of this. Um, like I could. How am I gonna make this work? It's really hard to get the blades out, but I can take a blade out if I if an intruder comes. I can take things like screwdriver things out of there. And guess what else? It has a freaking flashlight on the tip of it. How do you make that work? Maybe it needs, it needs to be closed or something to do it. There's like a way to activate it. It's be like in the right spot. It has this flashlight on it. When you like put it in the right spot, this thing lights up. So this, this will be helpful when we do a camping live stream or something like that. Now I will be taking a trip that I had an opportunity to take a trip to somewhere cool and tropical near the end of April. And I'm going to be filming some of the grade negative two finales content, as well as maybe some content for whatever the last few episodes of grade negative two are, which there are nine more, including the finale on the main combo class channel, including this week's one being the ninth last. Uh, some of the last few may be filmed in a fun, tropical place you folks shall see. To note, th that type of money doesn't come from Patreon or even YouTube ads. This was a cool opportunity I got. All the props are really, really cheap. And um, the place that I'm renting from, that money is coming from savings I made from music teaching and other things like that. And, you know, any donations through here, just go to camera people being able to hire, be hired more often 
and upgrading our audio quality and stuff like that. But those are a few of the fun things I found, as well as, for example, this spinner I made. There was a wheel I hung on my wall that I figured this is a good idea. And I, it was something I came up with a while ago that maybe I need to get back into. Look at this. You spin it, and you have like a spot it lands on. You know, it's a good old wheel. And you see where it lands. But this is if you feel like you got to do something. What should I do right now? What, do I, what am I going to force myself to do? And back when I made this, the uh, items that I found useful were music, meaning make music, bike somewhere, right? Contact someone, exercise, organize or clean, read or watch something, or film something. And I would spin this wheel and see what it landed on. So perhaps we'll have to make some more wheels for the classroom. That would be fun for our streams because we could randomly spin a wheel. And I got to do whatever the wheel says. Got to follow the wheel. Now, as it's starting to get a little darker, perhaps we will begin to migrate out to our combo classroom. I will note that I mentioned not just items I got from my past, that I'm looking at which ones I do or don't want to bring to my new bedroom versus uh, leave here at my parents' house. I have also gotten some new things to bring to the place, such as some discount clocks. So don't worry, we're going to have clocks in my new bedroom as well. We got more than enough clocks. Well, we've maybe been shouted. In any case, we, we're we catching up. Now, I think we are going to take a little field trip outside. I need to take a little break anyway for a moment. And so what we're going to do is begin our field trip in a mysterious way. And the way we're going to do that is going, because I never ended up going to the bathroom or anything like that that I was going to do a little bit ago. What I'm going to do is uh, the classrooms changed. We'll be at the right angle that will wait as the darkness is striking. And then we will get a half a spoiler by lighting some sparklers and one or two of the longest matches I ever had, which these are old school. I have so many old things from the dollar store. I don't even know which of them still work or don't work. So this is a few years old, but we're going to assume it's hopefully going to work. Looks like we can strike it on the bottom of the box, too. Some matches you can strike on... I shouldn't do it in here, but some matches you can strike the tip on another match. Some you can strike on your shoe. Some of them are a lot more difficult. You like need the right strip. Now... Due to the darkness rising and such, we are going to migrate outside in advance. I will bring some of these things. And we are going to take a little field trip. And, oh, the flashlight turned on for some reason. I don't know why it wasn't on before, but since it is a flashlight on here, this could come in handy. So we are going to bring this as well. Or a little Swiss Army tool. So then either if an intruder comes or if it's darker than I expect, we'll be ready. Now, might as well bring one or two candles as well in case we get nice and settled out there and chat at all. Okay, that's the amount of candles we'll bring. The amount that flew out of the bag. It was four. And... Let's bring these things outside, but I'm not going to face you fully toward the classroom right away. We're going to have to get a side view until it gets a little darker. And when we get that side view, if the darkness does not strike soon enough, we shall look at some more wolf from demonstrations. Now, unfortunately, people have noted it's gone back and forth on if the stream is super choppy or working normal. So keep me posted on that, folks. Hopefully it doesn't get super choppy or whatever. I don't know if outside's Wi-Fi is better or worse than in here. I'm, I literally don't know if it'll be an upgrade or downgrade when we go out there. So 
Uh, we might as well bring the poppets too, so that just in case it's just dark enough and the flashlight's not working, maybe I can see my way by doing this. So, might as well bring a couple of those as well. Now, I hope that I don't pop them all in my pocket. Or I had them in my pocket and I lean on something and it goes like, BAM! Because like five of them hit each other too quickly. <laughs> so, um, let's begin our little trip outside and watch as the darkness strikes and chat about more demonstrations and future interesting things. Somebody says choppy video. Now, the good news is while we go outside, I'm not going to run it through the whole path right there. So here, okay, this is not going to help the choppiness of the video, but we will put on a graph. I know this probably really won't. No, putting on a graph will mess stuff up. I really shouldn't do that. We are going to try one of these just hanging out. One of the easier ones that won't do as crazy of stuff. And I will have this. And this will be what you are looking at for a moment. And I will be changing the modulus. The modulus is what I have at the top up there. So we're going to know what... I can't see it all... Well, here, if I lift it up, I guess I can. There. So there's our modulus. And there's that. And that is what we are going to begin with. We're going to start with a low mod and we are going to do multiplication. And I want you to look at, just to refresh your brain, we've looked at these before, what patterns happen in multiplication of different mods. Now, I'm going to now put one of my beats on and silence my voice for a bit while I transfer us outside. All right, folks, so I am back in the combo classroom, and here we are at a weirder angle than usual, because like I said, oh, we can see our combo up there. Oh, no, it's okay. So, yeah, you know, I mentioned last episode with about a lot of, oh, a hierarchy <laughs> of infinities. Looks like this infinity fell off our hierarchy. But uh, that's why it just says Ombo ass. Uh, that it said combo class. It still says combo class behind that. Okay. So and yes, sometimes I do it on purpose to cover up the rest of it because I think it's funny. But whatever. Sometimes it's an accident that it just happens to say ass right at the end. Not my fault. Now. <laughs> You may notice something different as I slowly edge the camera down. But we are going to wait a moment here because I do need to run to the bathroom real quick anyways. 
And as we wait one moment, you're just going to be listening through um, a few more of my beats and hoping that we can lure a squirrel where my nuts go. Sometimes we got some nice squirrels. Now I'll bring a, a nut on the way back. I can't find a nut. So you're just going to have to study your little mod six table while you look at your ombo ass for one moment. And I wish I could make just that. I can make just that. Um, mod six is my favorite. We're gonna look at mod six. We're gonna take a photo of mod six and then we're gonna uh, open that photo. So now I just have that without all the other stuff. There we go, I made it work. You see, I'm not as much of a technological idiot as it may always seem. Oh no, that's probably exaggerating. I probably am as much of a technological idiot as it seems. But you know, you learn the technology that's important to you. So, study your little mod six table while you, uh, how do I, it's, okay, no, wait. I didn't fully figure out how to make this work, but I will be there. Oh, that's ring, oh no, I gotta figure out how to fix this. I, me something messed with the clock the other day, the grandfather clock, and now it's been ringing a lot. And at first I was like, that's pretty cool. Then I realized, Oh my God, if it's doing this all night, that's going to be really annoying. If it does 12 chimes every midnight and, you know, if it does four chimes every 4 a.m., that's not cool for the neighbors. So I have to figure out how to undo whatever I did with the grandfather clock. I don't know why it stopped ringing and then started ringing again. Um, anyway, here we get our little table in the corner. And, okay, this is too much work to try and put the mod six table in the corner i'm sorry folks we're just going to look at some nice natural backgrounds and i'm going to edge the camera a little lower and i want people to leave a guess if they want before i'm back very shortly about which would be the thing from grade negative one that occurred that I found funny and chaotic, but rarely enough that it's not just like he lit something on fire because we, that happens in most episodes, but something that occurred at a point in grade negative one that could potentially relate to an episode about different sizes of infinity. Well, I don't know if you folks notice anything different now it's kind of hard to tell when you write at the edge of whether you can get a clue or not but i'll have to be back in a few minutes i hope you enjoy i'm gonna go to no i'm not gonna go to just my beats we'll go we'll keep the um the nature noise on and is that any clock ticking noise There's like something ticking in there. I don't know. I'm probably bothering all my neighbors with this grandfather clock. If it's chiming every midnight, what have I done? So actually, I have a pact with some of my neighbors. I've formed alliances with several neighbors. And I have chatted with the ones who many people suspect would hate me. Now, uh, let me run off for a moment. I'll be back before long. But in the meantime... What I want you folks to think about is either what did you learn or what other questions do you have about what was earlier in this stream? What do you hope or expect might have happened uh, in the chaos that I'm about to show when I return as it's darker and I have the sparklers? And just tell me how your day went and what is something good bad and or interesting uh, it's the sequel to the good bad and the ugly the ugly guy became interesting i guess and somebody said they're always late but remember to anyone who's late that you can always 
watch them again after the fact they're on the live tab of the channel i keep them as videos just on the live tab they show up and also that right now is a good time to watch back because i'll be gone a few minutes all right i'll be back shortly But that clock in the background's rarely lining up with my beats. You could hear these pops a lot better or see them a lot better when I do it in the dark. You see what I mean when you snap the poppers between your fingers? Okay, so here's not super dark out here, but we're getting dark enough. It's about time to light a match or two and look at some things that may have occurred. At this point, if you think that you find it funnier to watch chaos occur within one of my main combo class episodes, you may want to quit the stream and wait until at some point this week, I will show why we have reached an interesting point. But for now, where's the box?
I really gotta fix that clock. If it's keep, if it's actually chiming like that, like every midnight and stuff, that is not cool for the neighbors. Um, I uh, can't find anything to strike these on, so I'm gonna try and strike one match on another. That often works. They're also really old. <laughs> also, they're these weird giant ones, so I don't know. Okay, maybe that won't work. Maybe we'll have to use the sparklers and we'll try the giant matches next time. For now, the sparklers will be good because not only will they help light up the dark parts of the area, but if it's not dark enough, we start accidentally getting a little too spoilery about how our classroom has been doing its typical late grade devolution. Uh, the sparklers may be an obs obscure aspects of it and keep it extra spoilery. Who knows? All right, these things take a second to light and then they just like start going off. At least that's how it worked uh, last time. Yeah. So. This is the time where we will see a strange version of brighting up the darkness and censoring the light parts of some point we have reached in our classroom that occurred in grade negative one and occurred again at this point in grade negative two. This may or may not be the desk. And it may or may not be diagonal. All right, so that is about all for today's stream. I had a few more cool demonstrations I'll pull open in a future one, but that was mostly what I wanted to cover today. Stay tuned, because not only will I have some more random stuff coming out through, throughout this week, but the next main episode on the Combo Class channel, another dense one, probably in the 20-minute to 30-minute range, or even could be post-30 minutes, will... This thing seems like it's ringing more than once an hour. What is up with this clock? You hear this like weird fast ticking it's doing too now? It did not do that before, and that is ticking faster than once a second. So why would you tick that fast if you're a clock? Okay, well, <laughs> I'll deal with that. Anyway, I hope all of you enjoy your week until the new random bonus content and next main episode, which will probably be Thursday or Friday, drops. And I hope you're excited for a new switchover of grades, because this time we'll have an even bigger landscape to work with. We'll have our combo classroom, but like I mentioned earlier in the stream, I'll be moving in a week, just mostly my bedroom, and I will have a place to set up a better live stream schedule and or short producing schedule or bonus content producing schedule. So um, that will be fun and we'll see what we can do with that as we lead into grade negative three which will be in a few months. And as some of my combo lords observed in grade negative one and may have predicted I may do again, things get a little extra crazy near the end of the grades. So I hope you all have a wonderful night. Hope you all have a wonderful day tomorrow if I don't drop anything, but I will try to drop something or another. It's been quite a busy time in my life, but I will explain many of the details I've been vague about in the grade negative two finale. Like how the grade negative one finale explained many secrets you hadn't known about me before. In any case, I love you all. Thank you for joining me in today's stream, and 